Hello and welcome. We're ready for the main event. I've got Steve Menendian in the house with me. How you doing, Steve? Doing pretty well. I can't complain after uh, getting off the slide there. So, and, yeah, and how are you talk, doing? Let's talk about your match before we get to this main event. So the the crucial turn there. We heard Rich talk about it going into the last match. Rich Shea casts a thought sees. You have mental misstep, and you just decline. Well, he he plays a forbidden orchard on turn one, okay. and generates a token. And you know, I know at this point he's playing both, and so you know, it was really just the damage, like two damage plus I have three damage right there, as well as the fact that, you know, I didn't really put a lot of thought into it. I was just like, this doesn't seem the time to, to, to misstep that. But the okay. other the other consideration really I think was just the fact that I I didn't really think I'd be I didn't think I'd be, let me be clear, I wanted to pitch the misstep to force. So yeah, that's okay. what, that was the main reason. The main function of misstep there is to be pitched to force. So. Okay. And so if he, takes the, if he takes the force, then, then I'm still left with, you know, he, he's taken three damage, you know, with the thought season, the token. So I don't know, it just, it just seemed like the right play. Yeah, fair enough. It definitely worked out when he took the misstep. And then left you the wear tear to blow up his mocks. That was super smart, by the way. I don't know. You'll get, I'm sure you'll go back well, and watch it and see you have, how insane it was. Well, you have to remember, I lost to Luis on the same play. So I learned my lesson. Remember? Because he, I had the option to blow up the Black Lotus, and he, he played Elish Norn. So I was like, I'm always looking out for that play. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, Rich didn't really think about the shatter, he, he said. And then, yeah, you were able to force the will of the show and tell once he finally drew the mana for it. So you're off the schneid. You're up to three wins. So two matches clear of last and still in contention to make the playoffs in theory. Let's hope. <laughs> yeah, you need, I think you need to 2-0, press to 0-2, and then you force a tiebreaker. Yeah. Rich is in exactly the same situation. All right, but enough of that. Main event. Louis Scott yes. Vargas in one corner. Eric Froelich in the other corner. Number one versus number two. Both of these guys have now clinched back-to-back -back playoffs in the two seasons of Vintage Super League. What are you expecting here? Have you got a, a read on what they're going to play? I, uh, I may know, so I don't want to say. Oh, all right, fair enough. I, uh, yeah, I just want to see what they're up to. I didn't have to, I didn't think a lot about what they were going to play. I've already played both of them, so they weren't part of my set of decks. I just, I'm here to enjoy the show. Yeah, this is, this is just fun. This is just going to be a fun match, and I hope these guys are taking this match seriously. I think they will be, although there is that, you know, that little uh, teammate, you know. I mean, they're really close friends and obviously close teammates, so. I'm, yeah, but I'm, they also both want the one seed. Yeah, like definitely. the thing that's really on the line here is if you get the number one seed, that is if you win the regular season, you have a buy straight into the finals. Definitely. You don't have to tell me how awesome the one seed is. <laughs> yeah, you wound up what? Last year, you were tied with Luis. You won the playoff game, the, the sort of tiebreaker match, so that you had the one seed, you had the buy into the finals. Luis fought his way back there, and then you took him back. All right, let's us get down to the match. Luis got Vargas, lots of results. Eric Froelich, oh lots of results. Oh my God, Eric is on. Eric is on dredge. Wow. <laughs> that's that's a really cunning decision. I mean, you know, after dredge went Owen in Owen six, right? Yes. I mean, you got to think that people are not going to be gunning for it. So. Oh, I know. I cheated on dredge hate in my sideboard. My sideboard's got almost nothing. I'm down to two graph diggers cages. I just gave up the matchup completely. Yeah, I have, well, there you go. I've got only four cages. And if, if I was really concerned about it, I would have had some containment priests or rest in peace or something else. So I've seen Right, right. The standard sideboard is seven. What? That is Grove of the Burn Willows? Yes. What is Luis up to? Luis, Luis is playing this, this Grove Landstill deck, which is really well geared toward beating the Delver decks. Mentor deck. Punishing Fire Grove of the Burn Willows. Yeah. Wow, those don't seem good against Dredge. No, this this should be a short match, a brief. A, I'm sorry, a brief, a brief game. I don't know what Luis has got in the sideboard, but uh, um, wow. 
this game this game won't take very long. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately, it doesn't look like uh, Eric yet has a dredger. So... Sure. But he yeah, does, he does need to find a dredger off this off this bizarre activation. Yeah. He didn't get the blood gas, but that's not going to hey. do anything. Yeah, and in, in, in the double bridge action should generate a lot of tokens quickly. There we go. There's a dredger. Oh, wow. Yeah. Bazaar straight into Grave Troll. This is just not a deck or a draw that Luis's deck seems set up to. What do you even call this deck Luis is playing? I, I think it's a Grove a Grove, Grove Landstill or Punishing Landstill. I'm not sure. It's, it's a Landstill deck in addition? You know, it, it's weird because he's got this Gushes in here, but I... Yeah, Standstill and Gush do not seem like friends. Yeah. Luis has just uh, entered in the chat his comment that uh, he's 0% this match, so, or this oh. game. Yeah. Wow. Eric kind of won the metagame gamble here, for sure. Jeez, that means Eric will have, if Eric does cash in on his alleged 100% chance to win this match, yeah, <laughs> Luis is just done. <laughs> <laughs> Enough. Narcomimas, yeah, I see it. You've got the bridges. I'm not interested. Let's go to the sideboard. And Luis seems like the kind of guy who would cheat on Dredge Hate in the sideboard, too. <laughs> what kind of guy is that, Randy? <laughs> no, I just, like, it's a meta game called... I don't know. I did not expect to see much. Part of it was also, I mean, some of it comes down to your suite of opponents. I yeah. guess I would have been more surprised by, you know, Kai or Martel or Dave running back Dredge when the two of them had already had such bad luck with it. I don't know. Eric seems like he's just kind of showing off at this point. It's like, I can play anything. I can just win with all of it. <laughs> well, Luis has, his other two opponents are Rich and Chris. And okay. so uh, I think that, I think, you know, his assumption that, that Rich would play Delver, <laughs> you know. <laughs> Which he also lost on, because Rich is on yeah, the I, I must be mistaken. It doesn't make sense to be playing Grove combo with Standstill. But it's just this... It's a very slow control deck, is what it is. Sure. Yeah, yeah. Gush is Gush is fantastic with Dak. There's no doubt about that. Yeah, for sure. Punishing Fire seems good with Dak too. Right? I just get to keep more of the Dak cards because I keep discarding the Punishing Fires. Yeah, yeah. It's insane. It's uh, it's it actually reminds me a little bit of the uh, the old bizarre Squee combo, Randy. Yeah. No, that's exactly what it is. Slightly more complicated, but yes. <laughs> Zero percent chance for Luis. So if Eric does win one of these two sideboarded games, he is a two-game lead. He's seven and zero oh if he wins one of the next two games, and we'll have a three-way tie for second, third, and fourth. Is it is it possible that Eric could lose his last two matches and have a playoff match for first seed? Yeah, in fact, his worst case scenario is if he wins this is a playoff match for the one seed. He will he will have clinched a tie for first if he wins this. Pretty nice spot to be in. That's insane. I didn't realize that Eric clinches a tie for first if he wins this match. And he certainly looks like he's well on his way so far. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, Chris is now realizing he's got to play Merfolk against Punishing Fire. That does not seem good for Merfolk. I mean, I guess the True Name Nemesis is good against everybody. I mean, True Name Nemesis is not getting burned out, but everything else dies to fire. All right, game two. Does Luis have a sideboard plan versus Dredge? Mulligan to five, Mulligan to four, Mulligan to three. Well, that's his, that's Mulligan his to that two, is there. Serum Powder. To mulligan to two again, mulligan to one. There it is. <laughs> we got there. No problem. Um, I'm sure Luis has to be feeling good. He's going to be quite annoyed to, <laughs> to see the bazaar. Well, Luis uh, is I, not going to be happy to see the bazaar on turn one. All he knows is it's a one card hand. Like, you don't mulligan to zero. Right. <laughs> Eric got there on the very, very <laughs> last card. It's I'm sure of... Luis is rolling his eyes right now. Definitely. Luis does so. Turn one, young Pyromancer. I mean, well, Eric is going to have to hit pretty well here. Luis still has an, a decent chance of winning this game. I agree. Yeah, Eric's probably going to have to activate this thing, what, on average, two and a half times to find, to 
find a dredger, assuming he has nine or ten dredgers. Yeah. Oh, and, and Luis has got off to a stellar start here. Yeah, he, he ponders, he puts the probe on top. In <laughs> Wow. He, he, he's so desperate, he needs I know. The for the, the bridges. Crazy. And uh, have... no dredger for Eric. Dread return, that doesn't do anything. So still no dredger for Eric. Oof. Luis is going to win this game. Eric Interesting. found his bizarre, but he had to mulligan all the way down to one to do it. And, I mean, Luis is going to kill him on, like, turn three. Yeah. So his – Luis was not quite accurate when he said 0% chance. He has to factor in that that percentage that, that dredge just mulligans to oblivion. <laughs> yeah, that, that's a single-digit percent. but and it, is, it definitely is. I think the match – But to win the match, you have to get that twice. Right. With four serum powder and four bizarre, I think your chances are something like 94%. Around. Yeah, I think it's. I heard ninety five at one point. It's, yeah, that it's, said, it's, though, it's, this draw from Luis can actually beat a good dredge draw. Eric's only had one turn. No, he's had two turns. He's had two turns. Yeah, I guess he's gonna get a third turn or no. This is this is the time walk turn, right? Yes. Oh right. no, wait. No, wait, he, I think he just played a Black Lotus, and he's playing the Dig Through Time off of a Lotus. Yes, so all true. He hasn't even taken the Time Walk turn yet. He might just... <laughs> nice. So he's going to be able to play Dac, and... or, or he's just going to punish Fire and then walk. Either way, he looks like he's just about to win. Yeah. And wow. Eric still not found a Dredger, so he's scooping. Nope. Here we on go. Game three. And I and see Luis. at least one Graft Digger's cage in Luis's sideboard, so. <laughs> it's not zero cards against Dredge. Luis can't win this, can he? Stranger things have happened in this tournament. That is true. Wow. So Eric is now on the play with a Dredge deck against a Punishing Fire Brew. Huh. With a tie for first in hand for Eric. Clinches no worse than a tie for first with the win. Who who are uh, who do we know who Eric's final two opponents are? Uh I can look that up. Eric's final two opponents are Bob Maher and Tom Martell. Wow, so Eric may decide the uh, the last place. He could he could be depending on. Oh, I have I have Tom and Kai, so I'm in that fight too. Wow, the road to last definitely so, evolved so to meet Eric, somehow. Eric's matches may not only decide who's the first seed, but also who is <laughs> the bottom. <laughs> I don't know. Man. His match right here may decide who's the first. Wow, seed. Down to four down to three, oh down to two. <laughs> It's happening again! Incredible. Dredge is just cursed in this tournament. What is going and, on? And even if even if he has the bizarre, Luis has the wasteland here. This oh, is crazy. this is crazy. <laughs> so yeah, stranger things have definitely happened in this tournament. <laughs> <laughs> now there's no clock from Luis. That's but... really that's that really incredible. This is absurd. Is he going to even play this bog? Probably. You just have to play. You've got to play the bog, right? Yeah. He hasn't even yeah. he hasn't yeah. seen. Oh, uh, dark, uh, sorry. Uh, Dak uh, salvaged that bog. Yep. It's not like he's even seen this land from Luis yet. No. If, if Luis doesn't get the punishing following, he doesn't have any, any mana. Oh, sorry. He has the... Uh, well, there we go. There's, there's a sequence. <laughs> Holy smokes. Luis Scott Oops. Vargas. Everyone, luck skill victory. Bravo. <laughs> that was amazing. <laughs> that was a lot of luck in that one. I don't know how much skill was involved. But there was a victory. And a little bit of luck. <laughs> More than a little bit. <laughs> you know what? Sometimes the heater just ends. Sometimes... You win all the matches, and then you get a dredge deck, 
with an awesome matchup and you just mulligan to one two straight games. And, and judging from the chat, that was a highly entertaining match. So I think everyone is... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> I think it was entertaining for probably everybody except Eric. Yeah. I think we could, he can spare a little bit of misery at our, uh, at our expense at this point. Or at our he's got a loss to give there? Yeah, he's got a little bit of something to well, give. Well, now the one seed is totally up for grabs. I mean, not only has Eric not got the two-game lead, Luis has tied him. And the two of them are only a match ahead of <laughs> third, fourth right now. We got to keep things interesting here. We can't can't be uh, too obvious. That does seem to be how the third trimester works, right? Everybody crunches back toward the middle, mass high <laughs> scenarios. We have started eliminating people, though. Uh, I think we now have people who have actually been eliminated from playoff contention. I think everyone below you. Anyway, we should look at the schedule and talk about how we got here. Let's do it. This was a crazy week. Bob Maher and Chris Pakula played first. Chris showed up with a Merfolk Brew sporting main deck Chalice of the Void. And the Chalice of the Void, he played a Chalice for one that completely blindsided Bob. Bob had just brainstormed a pair of one mana cantrips onto the top of his deck. So Chris got the W. Uh, Chalice looked great in that matchup. Chris moves to 5-2, clinching at least a tie for the playoffs, it turns out. Bob now in the last place fight. Uh, second match, I showed up with Merfolk. It's very, fairly similar. Not exactly the same as last set, but uh, similar. And, I mean, the mana denial strategy kind of got there. I had no idea what Williams was playing. Turn one, I'm able to play True Name Nemesis and Curse Catcher. All David did before he conceded the first game was show me a wasteland. So I put him on shops, miss sideboarded, because I kind of put in half my shops package. He turns out to be playing some crazy landstill deck, which I then played badly, I don't know. I am not happy at all with the way I played game two. And then in game three, I just, like, wastelanded all his colored mana sources. He had engineered Plague, but he could never come up with the colored mana for Abrupt Decay for my lord, so I was able to kill him through engineered Plague set to Merfolk. Then you had to play Rich Shea. And you kind of got away with one there, don't you think? Yeah, the match seemed, you know, incredibly close. I... I... You know, game one, I just got completely blown out. Game two, I felt like I had just total control the whole time and played it exactly according to my game plan. And then game three, I mulliganed to six, and, you know, it was, things were super tight down to the wire. So Yeah, and his, I think he regrets his decision on the thought seize. I think most people thought he should have taken any of a couple of different lines on a thought seize and then maybe even forced a shatter. But you got there. Finally halted the losing streak, moved up to three and four, tied Rich for... Fifth place, the two of you are still hanging out on the edge of playoff contention. And then at the bottom of the standings, Tom Martell and Kai Buda. Could Kai get safely away and keep Tom in the basement? No. It was Tom Martell piloting Doomsday who got the job done there. That was a combo one. Kai's on Belcher, Tom's on Doomsday, and Doomsday got it done. Kai had definitely a lot of mulligans hurting him there. Doomsday seems like a great choice if you're afraid of getting knocked out because it just it pretty much has great game against everything but workshops. So if you if you need some guaranteed wins or some high high odds wins, it seems like a great choice. And speaking of mulligans and problems, Eric Froelich <laughs> wins the first game with his dredge deck. First of all, shows up with dredge, sort of <laughs> running the gamut of all the vintage archetypes. But yeah, you said it. Dredge seems to be cursed in VSL. It went 0-6 in the first trimester. Eric wins the first game in a matchup that Luis typed in chat. He believed he was 0% to win. And he not only said game, he said 0% to win this match. Yes. So, I mean, he just didn't... It's interesting that, you know, in a sense you could say Eric won the meta game but lost the match. I mean, his decision was, I think, great. You know, it was a great yep. deck choice. He couldn't have had a better deck choice for that matchup. I, I, I can't think but of yeah, it. But, yeah, the 5% chance that... Uh, yeah, Reg is just going to fail to find its bizarre. Came through basically twice. Technically, he found the bizarre in the first draw, but on a one card hand when Luis had a great hand. Second game, no bizarre. Luis wins. So Luis ties Eric for first. Crazy week. Interesting stuff. All that? right. Two weeks to go. Oh, tell me about your mentor build while we're here. You seem like yeah. you have a different take on the mentor list, right? You're the only one who stuck to mentors. And your list looks a little different. Yeah, I, I actually got an opportunity to play it in real life this weekend in, in a Berkeley store called Eudaimonia, and I won the tournament. 
So I was like, okay, well, I'll just I'll stick with this plan. We'll see how it goes. Um, I basically played the same thing as last last time, but I think the the thing that showed up in all my matches is that I get get in these situations where I'd have a million cards in my hand and I didn't have a threat. So I added uh, this weekend. I added a couple of pyromancers, and it just worked so well. So I, I have, uh, yeah. I mean, it's pretty much pretty much the same thing. Although uh, my sideboard is pretty spicy for the uh, matches I've got coming up. So we'll let folks take a look at that. Okay. You got metagame calls? I'm, I'm still, speaking of sideboard cards, I'm just still reeling from, I got engineered plagued today. Yes, you did. Three times I got engineered plagued. I don't know. Williams definitely had me read very well. And uh, sometimes you get away with it, I guess. Yeah, you, I think, you know, you, you, you and Chris made, so I think, uh, no, Merfolk is just a good deck choice. So, you know, it's one of those decks where you're going to definitely get a win or two. Just the question is, can you run it all the way? So, yeah. So look forward to seeing your deck list. I hope everybody out there enjoyed this week. These felt like a fun set of games. We will be back next week. Vintage Super League Week 8 will be coming final, up next week. Final stretch. The Go. final stretch. The home stretch. Two weeks left to determine who's going to make the playoffs. Uh, Starting to get a hint of that, but who's going to finish last is anybody. You got four guys within a match of last place right now, and you and Rich are not out of this mess yet at uh, oh, at three and four. Come back next week, Tuesday, six o'clock. We'll have more Vintage Super League action for you. See you then.